Today we are going to be breaking a wall using shatter and bullet physics engine. So let's quickly get into it. And I'm going to start off by taking a simple cube. This will act as our wall. And in the last video we saw how we can use the shatter effect in Maya to create some distribution or chunks inside of a polygon. So in this video we'll see how we can use that chunks as our destructive polygon to break our polygons into different pieces. Alright, so this is my basic brick wall. Alright, and uh, I think it's good to go. I'm gonna name this wall. And uh, I'm gonna go into the FX menu. Let's quickly shatter this. And uh, if you don't have any idea about the shatter, I think it was the last video we covered everything about this. So make sure to check that out if you don't have any knowledge related to shatter. I'm going to get into the shatter and uh, before getting into uh, applying the shatter effect we have to delete the history and freeze transform because the shatter will not take effect if the history has been stored in or the translate value has been changed like here. So I'm going to freeze transform and delete here and center pivot. If you want you can also go to edit, delete by type history and modify freeze transform. But if you are using Maya 2020, 19 you must have this shortcut here. Uh, so the next thing is the shatter effect. So here as you can see we are going to be doing a solid shatter because we don't want a hull We don't have an open polygon. We want a solid shatter and in the shard count for my actually for my final rendering I think I took somewhere about 300 to 400 sh shard counts But for the preview purpose, I think it's going to take too long for that to calculate So be careful when you are putting in your number because there will be a calculation time where the shatter will be kind of breaking the whole polygon into different pieces. So don't increase your value too much only for the final rendering. So for the preview purpose, I'm going to keep it to 80. I think it will be sufficient or maybe like go to 100. Um, but I think for the final rendering, I went for something 350 or 400. And I'm going to keep the edge jagginess or let's uh, make it 0.1 and uh, seed value to 0 and the rest is good. I'm going to hide my original surface and hit apply. All right, so the shatter has been done and I'm going to close this. And this is the overall shatter of our, let me go to object mode, shattering of our object. Looks pretty good. And if you have this kind of weird uh, looking polygon, that is nothing just for the display. But if you want, you can simply select all of the polygon Hold shift, right click and go to soft and harden edges and hard, harden edges. And there you go. So that will just fix the whole thing. It's just a look problem. And if you go for something like harden edge and soften edge. And now it will show you something like this. Because it's kind of trying to show you a smoother version of it. And yeah, there you go. So the next thing is we have to apply our bullet physics engine to this. So we can play this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some multiple group of it just so it will act differently on different surfaces. So I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to go into my front view by hitting space bar. I'm going to hit 4 to watch my wireframe. And I'm going to hold control and deselect the bottom part here to something like this. All right. Now I'm going to create a rigid set for this. I'm going to go into the bullet rigid set. Let's open up the settings and let's call this outer and apply and close there you go now before doing this uh, there's one thing like for example we have created the outer surface but we don't have any way of selecting the inner surface so I'm gonna just undo here to let's quickly select all of these and remove let's delete the entire bullet system so again I'm gonna select all of these hold control and deselect the bottom part all right so this looks good if you want you can select some more something like this and uh, just some randomness here all right this is good to go and from this you can open up your solid shatter here and you can basically go to edit and group so now you have a group inside of a group i'm gonna hold my middle mouse button and drag this outside of this group and let's call this outer and let's call this Inner. Right, there you go. So now we have two separate groups for our bullet engine to work with. Looks pretty nice. Alright, so the next thing is to create the rigid set. So I'm going to select my outer here. Let's go to bullet, rigid set, and outer, and apply and close. 
select the inner, go to bullet, rigid set, open up the parameter and you know, apply and close. All right. So we have two different pieces here. One is outer, one is inner. Here you can see we have two solved surfaces and now we are good to go. So if I play this, the first thing that you'll notice is everything breaks apart. That is just something that shatter and bullet works with. It just explodes. So the way to fix it is we'll go into the bullet solver. The first thing that we have to do is define the shape of this wall. Right now what we have is some random shape. We don't have a simple native primitive like a cube or a sphere. We have different type of crystallized chunks. So we have to define this. So I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is ground plane just so we have a surface to play around with and the next thing is let's go to the outer initial state and uh, we'll go down to the collision attribute and instead of box i'm gonna choose hull that will define it will understand on its own what kind of shape there is and then uh, let's go to the inner i'm gonna scroll here and i'm gonna change the box to hull again all right so there you go now it's acting perfectly not exploding at all so the next thing that we have to do is we have to change the overall dynamics of this instead of directly acting uh, instantly we have to make it initially sleeping i'm going to do the same with this and uh, there's some kind of bug with this initially sleeping that you have to sometimes i'm going to quickly switch to gpu and 248 this will just give you a bit more accurate result all right so this is what the overall simulation looks I'm going to go back here and I'm going to select this and uh, sorry, let's go to bullet and initially sleeping and initially sleeping. Let's see again. All right, there you go. So now it's fixed. So just give a refresh, maybe try changing uh, the overall internal fix rate frame rate that might, that might fix your problem. So the next thing is the collider object here. I'm going to take my sphere. Let's scale this down. Let's bring this back to somewhere about here. And again, if you want to apply the overall dynamics, make sure you always freeze transform and delete history. It's just better to work with that when you're working with any type of dynamic. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to say active rigid body. And uh, now we have something like this. So uh, sphere is falling down and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to the initial condition and in the Z value in the Z axis we have X, Y and Z. I'm going to put in a value of maybe 25. That will just throw the sphere onto the 25 value of the overall value here. So here you'll notice that it's uh, throwing off on the wall here and then the wall is breaking apart. It's not exactly that good looking. So what I'm going to do is first of all I'm going to increase some speed here of our sphere. Let's hit play. Alright this looks good. Maybe like 45. Yeah. And the next thing I'm going to do is if you go to the bullet solver. Let's go to the outer state first. So we are going to work on this first. So here uh, there is something called as the glue shape. Or so the, what the glue does is basically tries to hold the overall surface as close all the polygon that is attached to each other it will try to stay connected as close to as possible even though there is a lot of pressure applied so i'm going to turn on my glue shape here and if the polygon is still breaking apart then we can increase the threshold so let's hit play here you'll notice they are breaking apart so i'm going to increase the value to maybe like six and let's hit play all right so now we have some bink uh, chunks here you'll notice that uh, they are not breaking apart that easily that means we need just a little higher value and one more thing I want to do is quickly change the overall mass here to maybe like 25 and let's change the glue to something like 8 alright so now we have something like this I'm gonna add some linear uh, and uh, angular damping just to add more weight to this wall alright Maybe like 0.8 and 0.8 and I'm going to make the friction to 1. Let's go. Okay, so now we are getting somewhere. And uh, again, I'm going to make this 12. Let's see. Okay. I'm going to take this sphere just a little bit. Okay, so there you go. All right, now for the inner part, let's go to the bullet solver. And we'll go to the inner initial state and let's turn on the glue shape for this as well. Just we'll keep the threshold a little lower for this one. 
and there you go and I'm gonna keep the mass to somewhere about 5 uh, just so we have different masses for the outer and the inside wall and for the sphere what we can do is we can increase some mass as well to maybe like let's make it 2 right and there you go so now it's looking pretty good now this is totally trial and error from here you have to experiment with everything here I'm gonna make the value to 1 and let's see yeah, there you go it's holding pretty quite well and let's make it 0.9 just so it's reasonable right. and here you'll notice that uh, all the chunks are kind of throwing off I'm gonna just increase some gravity here to like minus 25 there you go now it looks good and uh, let's maybe go for here and uh, in the initial state let's make it somewhere about 10 and for the sphere I'm going to make this pretty heavy here like 45 there you go and uh, let's play again and I can increase some more uh, friction for our sphere here just so let's go crazy with it 75 a bit more brute force let's go 150 yeah so there you go so this is totally up to you what kind of look you're going for from here uh, here you'll notice that the glue ship is trying to hold each other as possible but still breaking apart if you want uh, the overall wall to break apart that easily you can turn off the glue ship or maybe change the overall threshold alright so that's it for this one uh, try playing around with this try playing around with different masses and some dynamics and uh, have fun so that's it for this one and i'll see you in the next video